What is VS Code and why would you want to use it to edit Blender Python scripts and add-ons? VS Code is similar to Blender's text editor but has a lot more functionality. It's basically a text editor on steroids. You'll write code faster with guidance, there's better code highlighting, you'll easily work on projects that span multiple files, VS Code can point out where you made mistakes, there's powerful editing features like editing multiple lines at once, there's hundreds of useful extensions that will allow you to be more productive when writing code. Even the developers behind Blender use VS Code. And the best feature of all, it's free. So there is no reason for you not to leverage this tool to make your life easier when it comes to writing Python scripts for Blender. Hey, I'm Victor Stepanoff, and I'll be helping you set up Visual Studio Code to edit Blender Python scripts. We'll go over five steps to make this happen. This video is for Linux users. If you're not a Linux user, Check out the other two videos for Windows users and Mac OS users. And before we start, I actually didn't tell you about one more feature that in my opinion is a total game changer for anyone who hasn't used a tool like VS Code before. So make sure to stick around until the end. The very first thing that we need to do is install a standalone Python interpreter. Even though most Linux distributions come with their own Python 3 and Python 2 interpreters, there's a good chance that these interpreters won't match what Python interpreter Blender is using. So let's find the right Python interpreter we need to install. I'll be using Rocky Linux. Since it's one of the recommendations by the Visual Effects Society's Technology Committee. Let's go ahead and search for Python download. and then open the python.org website. At the time of the recording, Python 3.11 is the latest Python version, but there are other Python versions available. Which one do we need to choose? Let's take a look at Blender and see what Blender is using. Let's open the scripting workspace. And you can see that Blender is using Python 3.10. We'll need to get this version or anything higher. Let's hop on over to Ubuntu for just a minute and I'll show you how you can install the Python version that we need on a Debian based distribution. Let's open the terminal. We'll be using a personal package archive that will contain the Python 3.10 version. First, we'll need to install some prerequisites. First, I'll install the software properties common. After that's done, I'll add the personal package repository that contains the Python versions. So the command will be add apt repository ppa dead snakes forward slash ppa. After we add the personal package archive, we need to update apt get. And now we're ready to install our Python version and we want to install the Python 3.10 version. After that's done, we'll be able to run Python 3.10 from the command line. I'm going to use the minus capital V to get the version, and you can see that Python 3.10 is now available from the command line. I'll scroll down and select the Python 3.10.11. Scroll all the way down. And unfortunately, there isn't a Linux version. The only thing that we can do is build the Python from source, and that's what we'll be doing. And it's not as scary as it seems. I'll guide you through each step. Let's open the terminal. Rocky Linux is using the DNF package manager. The first thing that we need to do is make sure that it's up to date. After we made sure that it's up to date, we need to install a number of packages. I'll put a full list of these packages in the description so you can just copy them. Now that we have all the packages installed, we'll need to download the Python source. I'm going to cd into the downloads folder, and then go back into python.org, and then copy the link. Now we should have a URL in our clipboard. I'll use the wget command to download the Python source. 
I'll just paste in that URL. I'll run ls minus l to list the files in this current folder and there's only this Python archive. Let's extract the code. And I'll put all these commands in the description so you can just copy them. Okay, now we have a folder. I'm gonna cd into that folder. And you can see I listed all the files and folders in the Python 3.10.11 folder in our downloads folder. Now we need to create a make file. This is a file that's gonna be used to build the code. And I'll run the configure command. This will run a number of checks to make sure that our system is ready to build the code. Okay, now our system is ready to start building the code. But first I'll need to find out how many build jobs I can start when I build the code and I'll run the nproc command. And it looks like it can start eight. So I'll type in make minus j for jobs and then type in eight. So that eight just came from the nproc result. This is gonna take some time. Now Python is getting built from its source. Okay, now we finished building our Python interpreter. Let's first check that this Python version doesn't exist until we install it. So by default, Rocky Linux comes with Python 3.9. So I can type in Python 3 minus capital V. And then you can see that the version is currently Python 3.9. And if I type in Python 3.10, this command doesn't really exist. Now, after we've built our interpreter, we should install it. So I'll run make and then alt install. There's actually two commands in make, the install command and the alt install. It's very important for you to run the alt install because it won't replace that 3.9, so the system Python. This sometimes could lead to your system failing, so I would highly recommend to do the alt install. And actually, let me add the sudo as well. Okay, now let's see if that Python 3.10 exists. Now Python 3.10 exists. And, and now let's run this Python interpreter that we just installed. And this will open a REPL. This is the same thing that you'll see in Blender scripting workspace, but this is outside of Blender. Let me write some code that generates a random number. I'll import random and then use the random dot rand int and I'll generate a random number from 0 to 100 and let me quit out of this REPL by hitting control D. And now we're ready to install VS Code. Let's search for VS Code download and then open the VS Code website. And if you're using a Debian based distribution, you'll download this .deb. Also, depending on your distribution, your package manager might be able to install Visual Studio Code. So check there first. For example, on Ubuntu, you can find VS Code right in the Ubuntu software app. And since I'm running Rocky Linux, I'll be using the .rpm. I'll download that. I'll go ahead and install just by double clicking and then hitting install. And after the installation is done, you'll be able to launch VS Code. The first thing that we need to make sure is that Visual Studio Code can work with Python. Let's open the extensions sidebar and search for Python. And then I'll install the top results. This is the extension that was created by Microsoft. It should have a lot of downloads. Okay, after the installation is done, let's open a folder. I'll create a new tutorials folder right in my home folder. And then open that folder. Click I, yes, I trust the author. And then let me add a new file by clicking the new file button. I'll call it myscript one dot pi. 
And then let's add another file. On the sidebar, you'll be able to open files in your project. And at the top, you'll be able to switch between already open files in your project, just like in a web browser. One thing that we need to make sure is that VS Code has found the Python interpreter that we installed. You can click here and then choose the correct Python interpreter. We need the Python 3.10. And if it's not, you should update this right here. Okay, let me go into the first script and then write the same code that generated the random number. And then go ahead and save it. And then in the sidebar, click on run and debug. Hit the run and debug button and then select Python file, debug the current act Python file. And you should see a terminal appear at the bottom of VS Code and you, you should see how the script runs. Nothing really gets printed out, and let's fix that by creating a new variable and printing this new variable out. Let's go ahead and run this again. And now you can see that it's printed the random number that we just generated. Now let's write another script. I'll write a script that opens the Blender website from the script. So I'll import web browser and then type in the URL save it, and then run the script. And look at that. And with this setup, you're ready to automate anything you want outside of Blender. And now we need to teach VS Code about BPY. So VS Code will be able to give us hints as we write our scripts. There's a fake BPY module that allows VS Code to do this. I'll provide a link in the description. We'll be using the pip install method. So we'll need to just run this command right here. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Go back into VS Code and then right in the terminal, write Python 310 minus M for module and then paste in that command and then hit enter. This should install that Python package. And I'll go ahead and restart VS Code. Okay, let me create a new script. And with this script, I'll create a cube and then update the location of this cube on the Z axis. So I'll import BPY. Notice as I type, VS Code is giving me options to autocomplete. I can just type in part of the text and then hit tab to finish the typing for me. And also notice that I don't have to type every single letter from a given command. So I can just type in just a part of the primitive cube add command and then hit tab and VS Code will fill that out for me. I'll give this cube a size of four and then I'll create a new variable. get the context, active, and then object against, and see I'm not using all the letters from that property. After I've created a variable, VS Code is able to help me with that too. And now you can see how fast you can write your scripts without looking at the documentation. And now we need to connect VS Code and Blender. And to do that, we'll need to install another extension. So I'll open the extensions sidebar and then search for Blender Python. And then look for the Blender development extension created by Jacques Lucas, and then install that. After the extension is done installing, I'll go back to my script. and then hit Control shift p to open VS Code's command palette and type in Blender. And you can see all these commands were installed by that extension. Let's go ahead and select the Blender start and then select the Blender executable we want to start. I'll just navigate to the Blender that I have installed and select the Blender executable. This should launch Blender and here's Blender. 
and in VS Code you should see debug client attached. During the very first boot of this extension, this VS Code extension will install some extra Python packages into Blender's Python so it can communicate between VS Code and Blender. All right, let me delete everything from the scene and then press Control shift p to open the command palette and then select the Blender run script. And if you switch back, you can see that our script has executed without opening Blender's text editor. Now it's time to talk about the game-changing feature I mentioned at the start of the video. The feature is called debugging, and the basic idea is that it allows you to pause the execution of your script and inspect the variables, properties, and see how your script executes step by step. Let's add some code to illustrate this feature. Okay, to showcase the debugging in action, I'll make the script a bit longer. I'll just create a location variable and then update the location on the X, Y, and Z. And then place breakpoint right in the middle of our script. Okay, let me hit Control shift p again, open the command palette, and then run the script one more time. And now you can see that our script actually stopped right in the middle of where we put the breakpoint. And if you take a closer look, we have some variables right here that we can start inspecting. We can slowly step over the script, basically running the script in slow motion. And you can see as I go through the script, the location variable is updated as I go through each line. And then I'll go ahead and press this continue and the script will finish executing. And you can see that the cube was placed in the updated location. But that's not all. Let me create an example add-on to show you how you can debug that as well. I'll create a new folder in tutorials. I'll create a new dunder init .py file and then paste in the code from one of my tutorials where, where I explain how to create a custom operator. I'll just paste that and with this add-on code make sure that Blender is not running and then let's hit Control shift p and then start Blender. You should see that the custom panel is actually available already after we start Blender this way. I'll delete everything from the scene and then you can see that the buttons of this add-on are working. Now, this is the custom operator I was talking about. I'll add a breakpoint right into it and see what happens when I press this button. So I'll go back into VS Code and then I'll find this custom function. So this is the function that defines the logic for that button. I'll put a breakpoint right in the middle of this function and go back into Blender, press this button and you can see right away, as soon as I press that button, the breakpoint was hit. And at this point, I can just start investigating the parameters that were passed into this function. I can start stepping through this function and see what happens next. You can see how powerful this could be. Okay, now that you have VS Code set up, make sure to check out this tutorial next so you can start using it right away. Thanks for watching.